Hello, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Welcome back to another episode of Meant to Bloom. This is the podcast for personal growth for hot mess moms. Join me on the journey from overwhelmed to overjoyed, from hot mess to happy mom. I am so glad you're here with me today. I want to make this one short and sweet. Three quick ways to calm down and self-regulate. Okay, I mean, how... Ugh, I feel like it's like the biggest complaint of moms is just, I don't know how to go about my day without, without being explosive, without yelling at my kids, without, you know, experiencing that mommy rage because we are so dysregulated. Our sleep is always being disrupted. We, you know, struggle to get proper meal times in. Our bodies just need so much more from us than what we're giving it. It's not that you're a bad mom. It's not that you're mean. It's not that, you know... You can't stop yelling at your kids. It's that your body needs more from you in order to remain in a calm state. Okay, but here I just want to share three quick ways that you can calm down when you're like already dysregulated and wound up and experiencing anxiety and overwhelm and all of the things. Okay, so first up, Let's paint this little picture here, okay? Your nervous system has a lot to do with your emotions. This was something that was newly, new information that was newly given to me recently in the past, you know, six months, I think is the way specifically that your nervous system and your emotions and your thoughts and your actions all connect. Um, and it is, it is like a circle flow, okay? So let's start with your nervous system. Your nervous system speaks to you through emotions. And then those emotions, our brain turns those into thoughts. It tries to explain them. It tries to reason them. It tries to logic with them. That comes into our thoughts. So if you're thinking you're not enough, it's because you're already feeling some kind of an emotion that triggered that. And if you're feeling that emotion, it's likely to do with your nervous system, okay? But here's what your nervous system is impacted by. It's impacted by your actions, your habits, your rhythms and routines, the things you're actually doing. And what and those things you're doing influence the nervous system, which then influences the emotions, which then influences the thoughts, which then leads to your actions, which then influences your nervous system. You see that circle there, okay? So if your nervous system is constantly dysregulated because of lack of sleep, because of lack of nutrients, because of lack of simply taking time to calm down because it's overworked and overwhelmed and burnt out. Burn out is your nervous system. It's your nervous system that gets burnt out and exhausted and overwhelmed. And then that leads you into those feelings of burnout and the feeling of exhaustion and the feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, it leads into these thoughts where you rationalize it and you think, oh my gosh, I'm failing at this. I'm just really bad at, you know, all of this, I'm not doing okay. Which then leads to the actions, which your actions is either sit in it, stay in it, continue to perpetuate the same thing over and over again, or do something different. Do something to support the nervous system. Do something to support your emotional health. Do something to support your thoughts and your mindset and keep that all in check and positive and good gratitude. This is the way these things are all connected. Okay. So practicing calm will make you a better mom. And it's not that you're not a good mom. It's that you can't see the good you're doing because you are so blinded by the times that you are so dysregulated that you cannot think straight, that you cannot hold a safe space for your children who need you right? Being calm makes you a better mom because it makes you more available to those around you because you're taking care of yourself first. When you care for yourself, you can sit in a state of calm 
And when you can sit in a state of calm and peace and love, you can deal with everyone else's drama and needs and you just have more time and space for them. It makes you, it, it makes all of your relationships more easy because it's putting you in your driver's seat instead of your overwhelm or your anxiety or your anger. It's putting you, the real you in the driver's seat. Okay, so here, let's jump into this. All right, three quick ways that you can actually calm yourself down and support your own self-regulation. Okay, number one is a deep cleansing breath. If you've heard me talk about deep cleansing breath before, it is super simple, okay? Here's how we do it. One big giant breath in. <gasps> it's even better if you can hear it. Like then you really know you're letting all the air in, expanding the chest. Big, big breath in. And as you exhale, I want you to envision the stress, the anxiety, the tension, the overwhelm, all of that all of the uncalm within you, all of the chaos within, envision it like a ball. And as you exhale, you're going to breathe it out. And it's now a bubble. You're breathing out a bubble that is floating away. This is a cleansing breath. And as that bubble floats away, as you breathe out the stress, I want you intentionally relaxing the muscles in your face, in your jaw, in your shoulders. Let it go and just melt as you exhale. And take as many of these deep cleansing breaths as you need. That's number one. Number two is a staircase visualization. This is the first time I ever visualized anything. I I don't even remember where it came from. I feel like it came from a like 17 magazine or something. It was so long ago. Um, I was not into visualization or meditation at all when I came across this one. Okay, but this one takes a little bit more time. What you're going to do is you're going to close your eyes. You're going to breathe deeply and you're going to visualize that you're walking down a staircase. And you're going to count each step on your way down. There are 20 steps. We're going to count backwards. All right. You're going to step down step 20. Step 19. Keep breathing. Step 18. Step 17. And as you're going down the steps, all right, you're going to start to envision what's at the bottom of the staircase. All right, what you're walking down the staircase towards is your happy place. Whatever that might be. Maybe it's a meadow with butterflies fluttering around in the sunshine. Maybe it's a calm beach setting, the waves gently lapping against the sand. Maybe your calm space is your bedroom reading a book by, by a dim lamp. Maybe it's someplace totally imaginary, someplace fictional, but I want you to envision that you're walking down the steps every time you breathe towards this beautiful, very calm scene. All right, you are approaching a place where it's impossible to feel uncalm. It's impossible to bring conflict and chaos into this space. It is so calm and refreshing and exactly what you need right now. And you're going to keep breathing as you count backwards. And as you take that final step, one big exhale out, release the tension in your shoulders. That is the staircase visualization. Um, my eyes have to adjust. I shut my eyes to go through that. Okay. Number three, cause I'm going through these fast. Sorry for the abrupt transition. Uh, <laughs> have a mantra that is deeply personal to you. Something that maybe you have journaled on before to really dig deep into it, but having a mantra that helps to calm you. Oh my gosh, something that you can turn to over and over and over again. All right, don't feel like you need to reinvent the wheel here. Okay, a couple simple ones are one thing at a time. This one has calmed me through many anxiety attacks. Remembering to just do one thing at a time. 
It doesn't all have to be done all at once. If I just do one thing at a time, that's enough. Okay. Another one is I am patient. I am kind. Okay. I am patient. I am kind. These are derived from the definition of love from, um, I think like first Corinthians, I always misquote the, the like 13, four, four, 13 or something like that. I don't know, but there's a definition of love in the Bible. It says love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, you know, everlasting, like blah, blah, blah. All, all the things I'm going to misquote it if I try to do it all. But I know for a fact, love is patient. Love's kind. That is the beginning of it. I am patient. I am kind. I am loving. Whew, something quick, something simple that calms you down. Pick something, stick with it, go with it, okay? And then four, I'm gonna give you a bonus one because this one was super important and it was actually like number one, but sometimes you cannot do this one and it is touch some grass, all right? If you are in a place where you can get outside and you can physically touch grass, physically put your bare feet in the dirt and get grounded, like literally grounding in the ground, Oh my goodness. It does wonders. This is my number one way of calming down. And I love to combine a lot of these two. Like I love to go outside, get barefoot if I can and do my cleansing breaths, repeat my mantras, um, do a visualization, whatever, combining them, however it, it feels good and it works. All right. So that's what I'm going to leave you at beautiful. I love you so much. And just remember I have announced it's funny. It's funny to me because I I announced these things and planned when the episodes were coming out and I have begun announcing that the podcast is changing and shifting right at the anniversary of my podcast. Um, June 6th was the two years of this podcast launch. Um, This podcast has been around for two, two full years now. And then June 12th was the, was last week when I also mentioned it and did not mention last week that that was the anniversary of the day I nearly ended my life and that decision to stay and to change things and to do things in a way that didn't lead me back to such a deep depression that I would want to do that to myself again. That, that, that is the day, the anniversary of the day that started it all. Like that's how happy mom brain was born. That's how the daily, um, The planning journals was born, was through me supporting my own life, right? And that, that, that has just bred everything here. Um, so I think that's really interesting, but just so you know, like, yeah, I'm, these podcasts are going to be regular once a week through July. I have those all planned out. Um, I know things I really want to get said, so I'm going to say them, um, and then when it comes back in October, things, it's going to be kind of a different format. And I'm very excited for it. And maybe if you're just listening in the podcast app, you might not notice a big difference other than the consistency is different. Um, But if you follow me over to YouTube and you follow me into the Bloom Room, um, which is my free community where I also offer the paid group coaching program and my courses are all on Bloom Room now, which is uh, offered through the Circle platform. Um, but if you follow me into those places over to YouTube, you'll see that the format is going to be set up differently. And I'm very excited for that and what that's going to bring. Um, but we will leave it at that. Please join me in the bloom room. So we do not lose contact, uh, go to brittanyclarkson.com forward slash community, or find the link in the description below, um, and get in there. All right. I love you. Bye.